Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you about two quick things today before we get started on tonight's story. Black Rainbow, you should be able to see a link for it in the description down below, is an anthology of horror from LGBTQIA authors, a collection of 25 terrifying tales, and currently number one release in LGBT horror on Amazon. It's currently available for pre-order, and you can pre-order it for only $3.99. Link's gonna be in the description down below. And I, Mr. Creepypasta, am going to be available this weekend. I'll be in Roswell, New Mexico for Galacticon, which is kind of a dream come true for me because I don't think I've ever gotten a chance to really go to Roswell, New Mexico, and that's like, it's alien central, dude. I'm gonna be there telling scary stories, and I'm gonna be trying to live stream a little bit from there too. So, if anybody is in the Roswell or the New Mexico area and want to uh, come over for a little bit of the alien sci-fi horror, then I really hope you're able to do so. More information about Galacticon will also be in the description down below. Alright guys, that's all. On to tonight's story. The old woman lived by herself on the moor. The nearest village was a three-hour walk through a marsh that few dared to cross. One wrong step and a traveler could find their feet sinking into the wet, spongy ground. Sinking. Sinking. Slowly until the soppy earth swallowed them whole. In recent years, she had lost more than a few sheep this way. Young ewes that broke away from the herd and wandered too far from pasture, and by the time she would hear their panic baws, she knew there would be no saving them. The moor had isolated her lone little cottage, rendering her a hermit. She received no visitors. No one besides her dared to make the journey, and she herself only ventured out of the village once every few months. The rains had been falling heavy for the past few days, and the recent foul weather had made the wetlands impassable, even for her. There should not have been anyone around for miles. The thunderstorms alone would have made evenings on the moor unbearable, and yet the old woman knew she was not alone. The screams had been echoing over the fields for the past few evenings, tormenting her, robbing her of sleep. Ghastly and disquieting, they began around midnight and broke just before the first rays of dawn bled over the hills. Those that ran the lips of the valley. She lied in bed as the wails filled her ears, thinking back to the time long, long ago when her hair looked like fire and not wispy gray smoke, and a time when she didn't live a life of solitude. She had a husband once, a man whose picture she still wore in a locket around her neck. Together they had a son. Though decades had passed since the wetlands had taken the boy. The old woman closed her eyes, but struggled to recall the child's face. Time had caused his image to decay in her mind, crumbling his features, scattering them like ashes in the wind. And though the mask she envisioned was but a placeholder, his voice was fresh in her mind. That she did not have trouble recalling. It had been haunting her since the rains began falling earlier that week, crowing and moaning in the darkness and on occasion even calling out for mommy. She sat up in bed and lit a candle on the end table. The screams were more persistent than ever and the old woman found they were becoming harder to ignore. No longer were they drowned by the roars of thunder or the drumming of rain against the roof of her home. No, no longer could she chalk them up to nightmares or tricks of the mind. These screams were real. This much she knew. Her boy was out there somewhere on the moor. The old woman hobbled to her feet. Her bones ached beneath the weight of her haggard frame. Carefully, she made her way to the window and gazed out across the field. A crescent moon hung luminous and grand in the sky, a silver sickle piercing deep, dark storm clouds. The screams swelled through the valley again, though this time they were not alone. A familiar sting of words had risen up over the field. It had been decades since she had heard the cry, but she remembered it clearly. Mommy. Mommy. 
please. She wrapped the shawl around her shoulders and staggered out into the night. The rain had relented for now, but she knew the break would only be temporary. The storm would return, and when it did, it would be just as fierce and cruel as ever. The thunder rumbled across the heavens, clouds in the distance igniting like embers, and she prayed that God would show her mercy and strike her down where she stood. Mommy, the voice cried out again. It had come from over the northern hill. Of course it had. It would make the most sense, she reasoned. It was where the ground would be the most treacherous, where her son had taken his last breath. Her feet moved unconsciously beneath her as she slogged through the muddy meadow like a rusty wind-up soldier, each step conjuring painful chapters from her past, the only man she ever loved, heading off to war, the letter from his regime informing her that he had died on the battlefield, the frustration she felt after realizing she would have to raise their son without him, a boy whose mind had stagnated at an early age. Wind howled across the moor like the cry of a wounded animal. The old woman's body began to shake as she imagined the dreadful scene that was likely taking place just over the northern hill. She wished her husband could be there with her now, holding her hand as she approached the base of the wicked mound. At least then, she wouldn't have to be alone to face what waited for her. Thunder rolled once more, louder than before. Lightning streaked through the darkness, and she felt a cool drop of rain fall against her face. The storm would be upon her shortly. She began her climb up the northern hill, something she hadn't done since the day her son had last walked upon the earth. It required more effort this time. Her legs had atrophied in her old age, and the strength she had when she was younger had long since dwindled to but a fragment of what it once was. A scream ripped through the air, the sad, desperate cries of the child she once carried in her womb. She shuddered. Before the rains had begun, it was a scream she thought she'd never heard again. In her nightmares, perhaps, or maybe even in hell. But not now. Not while she was awake, not while she was still living. The old woman stood upon the hill's apex and gazed down into the valley. She didn't need to search for the boy. She knew exactly where she would find him, the same place she had watched him die decades prior. Thunder clapped, lightning cracked the sky, and rain began to pour down as if firmament had burst. The boy stood neck deep in the bog. One arm had already been swallowed by vicious, unstable land. He looked up to the old woman, and hysterical cries began to spew forth from his mouth. A black memory from her past returned in corporeal form. The child stretched his free arm toward her. Mommy, please... But just as she had done when she was younger, the old woman bade him no reply. She had spent nearly every day hating herself for allowing the boy to suffer. In her youth, she could have saved him easily. She had been strong enough to wade into the muck back then and pull him free. But madness had taken her when her husband had passed and she had thought herself better off without the child. It was only later that she came to realize how bitter and callous she had been. The old woman descended the hill toward the boy. The rain was pounding the ground like a stampede of horses, and yet the power of the storm did little to muffle the child's cries. He twisted and writhed in a futile attempt to free himself from the mud, just as he had done years prior. The old woman had time. Even though she was slow, she knew she'd be able to reach the boy before he was fully submerged. She came to the bottom of the hill and staggered into the bog. The thick, sodden soil began to give almost immediately beneath her feet. She could not yet see the boy's face. Black clouds had blanketed the stars, and the rain obscured her vision. Soon enough, she would see him, though. Soon enough, she would no longer have to imagine his features. Mommy! The boy bawled. The woman proceeded deeper into the bog. It did not matter that she knew the child had already died. She felt compelled to go to him anyway, to comfort and console him, to pull him free. It wouldn't ease the sins of her past, but perhaps... Perhaps it would put her soul at peace in her final few years of life. 
She was waist deep in the mud now. The boy stretched his hand to her again, but it was too far away for her to grasp. She needed to get closer. The old woman attempted another step, but gained no ground. Her body felt glued in place. She wondered then how she would pull herself free from the bog, but quickly put the thought behind her. She'd worry about the child first. The old woman leaned over and extended both arms as far as she could, and still, she couldn't meet the child's hands. Frustration began to burn through her. She had come too far to fall short now. She sunk her fingers into the soil and began to pull. For minutes, she tugged at the earth until the muscles in her arms were on fire and her hands went numb with pain, and finally the ground began to give way. She found herself able to take a couple more steps. She gripped the child's hand as tight as she could. It felt like ice in her palm. The old woman tried to haul him free from the mud, but he felt as, as though he weighed as much as a boulder. Perhaps she thought she was too fatigued. No matter, she would hold on to him as best she could, prevent him from sinking any further, wait until she could gather the energy she needed to pull him free. The boy squeezed her hand so tight it started to hurt. She looked up to meet his stare, only to find a pallid face staring back at her. His eyes were a dull gray, and cracks ran down his face like an old granite statue. She tried to jerk herself free from his grasp, but could not. He was stronger than she was. Why'd you leave me, Mommy? The child groaned. She had no retort. Lightning flashed, illuminating the wetland, and the old woman could see that her son was decaying before her eyes. Worms and maggots wriggled from his flesh. Black bile spilled from his mouth. His eyes... No, he squeezed her hand harder, and her bones began to break under his grasp. Why did you leave me alone? The boy yanked her forward, and she fell face first into the mud. His icy hand was on the back of her neck now. She gasped for air, but only dirt and water found its way into the old woman's lungs. She pressed her palms into the soil, but the land was so wet she could not find the support to push herself free. Stay with me, Mommy, the boy said. Thunder may have rumbled again, but she could not be sure. She was completely submerged now, and still the boy was shoving her deeper into the bog. Her head was swimming, and her lungs felt as though they might explode. She flailed desperately in a last-ditch attempt to escape her son's grasp, but could not break free. A thought blurred through her mind in her final few moments of life. This was for the best. No longer would her son have to suffer all alone. She could suffer with him. From now until the end of time, they would be together. At the bottom of the bog. Two tortured souls. Entwined. Beneath the wetland's murky depth. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thanks for listening to tonight's story. I really want to encourage you guys to take a look at the description, which I know that's not something you guys do on YouTube or on podcasts, but hear me out, okay? In the description of every single video that I've ever done, there's always going to be a link over to where you can find more from the author of the story. And I'm suggesting that you guys check them out because, let's be honest, without the authors, there are no Creepypasta stories. I mean, yeah. I'm pretty sure I could be on here and tell you guys the cookie dough recipe off the back of a Chips Ahoy, but that's not going to be nearly as interesting. So seriously, if you guys are listening here on YouTube, or if you're listening on Spotify, or iTunes, or Google Play, then take a look. I also want to give a great big thank you to Andrew Steinberg, Andrea Solvik, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Champinsky, Melissa Siegwert, Cindy Barney, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Gabrielle DeBaca, Asia, Tyler Ramberg, Nicholas Saeed Elyasen, Brianne Ventine Jensen, Ken Lando Higuchi, Eric Mary, Daniel Polson, Trace Miles, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, and Wayne Milestead. These guys are the big boys over on patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, which you can always go to if you'd like to help support me and the show. That's it for tonight, guys, and sweet dreams.